listening to Tuesday Night Serena, or actually Wednesday Night Serena. Tomorrow, Kilkenny City officially gets a brand new museum. The Butler Gallery will be relocated from its original home in Kilkenny Castle to a six million facility in Evans Home on John's Quay in the heart of the city. And it will be a huge addition to the cultural capital of Kilkenny and the Midlands and of course Ireland itself. The opening exhibition comes courtesy of one of Ireland's leading photographers, Amelia Steen. It's entitled The Bloods and it's a photographic celebration of membership of the Irish Defence Forces. Amelia Steen joins me now along with Anna O'Sullivan, director of the Butler Gallery. I'll talk to Anna about the um, wonderful new museum in a moment. But Amelia, tell me about the Bloods. As I say, it's about celebrating members of the Irish Defence Forces. How did it come about? Hello, Kay, and uh, thank you for having me on the programme. It came about entirely by accident, as in I... Uh, my partner, Mick O'Dee, was a painter um, in residence during Kilkenny Arts Festival. And I was present in the barracks during that time. And some photographs were made. And I was given a tour of the barracks. The handball alley was shown to me. And I just knew that would make a perfect daylight studio, um, undistracted background. And a private space where which each person could enter in to be shot. So, so it's an old traditional film. handball so, alley, is it, Amelia? It is, and it's in a very good state of repair and a little door leading into it. So the people would wait outside. Um, and they were being shown the August Sander book, um, Portrait of Our Time, and it was it, it they were they just appeared in through the doorway with whatever their their tool of their profession, if you like, a sniper with a gun, a medic with his bag, a mechanic with his kit. And um it just it just developed. It it, it it kind of expanded itself over a period of time. Okay, so you were in the in the barracks uh, when Mick O'Dee was doing his portraits in Kilkenny. Why then did you hmm. think, oh, the defence forces and they will look so well in the ball alley? Tell me about the photographic <laughs> eye that should juxtapose those th- those two things. That's an interesting one, Kay, because I didn't really think about it. I just. Um, approached it as in, shall shall we make some photographs? Let's see what they look like. H- how would it be with somebody standing in front of the camera and me taking the photograph? How intense could that experience be between myself, the photographer, and the subject? And please remember that members of the Defence Forces are trained to... Um, to, uh, for ceremonial duty, so they, so people hold and stand them, themselves in 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 a most particular manner. So I think it was a very, it was one of those things that just rolled onto itself. And uh, there were some very interesting people in the barracks at that time, and we got on as people, and that's what drove the project. Well, let's go to the individual people you photographed in a moment. But first, Anna, as director of the Butler Gallery, how big uh, an occasion is this for you? Because I know how what a great dream this was mm. for you to move from, from the castle to this mm. new venue. Describe the venue and how long a project has it been. Well, the Butler Gallery has been around since 1943, and from the very beginning in its constitution, there was always a goal to find a home of one's own. And while we've been happily ensconced in Kilkenny Castle for 44 years, we've never had enough space to uh, really uh, show off our collection and facilitate our our diverse learning and public engagement program. So this has been a long-term goal of of many executives and boards as a gallery. Um, But for the last 15 years since I've been director, we've been working on finding this new home and uh, the Kilkenny County Council, which are our great collaborators in this project, uh, gave us Evans Home, which is a former almshouse built in 1818, right in the middle of Kilkenny City behind the Carnegie Library. Some people might not have ever seen it because at the front it was surrounded by trees and now it's been cut back and can see the uh, uh, wonderful gravitas of the building. And it has been restored beautifully by McCullough Mulvin uh, Architect with a small addition. So we're incredibly excited. It has been a long journey. It has been, it's just been so rewarding. It's almost like we've, we, we've had lots of setbacks and, uh, you know, a pandemic to add to it, to 
delay the opening. But we are so happy to be now uh, at, the, at a stage where we're sharing our collection and uh, now have a double height exhibition space to uh, show off uh, exhibitions such as, as Amelia's. It gives us an a, a enormous opportunity to dream and expand and um, uh, plan for the future. Uh, so the building itself is wonderful. It's a heritage site. It's a museum. It, it has it had a long history of being uh, from a, a 13th century monastic settlement through to being a, 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 a army site for 100 years and an Mom's house for 150 years before it became a museum. And consequently, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to open our exhibition, our first um, temporary exhibition with Amelia's show to honour the Defence Forces and to make a... To, to, to really honour the, the past use of the building. So it was a perfect a perfect union of, of Amelia's terrific body of work and finding a really great place as our first opening exhibition. So I know before you've always had very exciting exhibitions in the Butler Gallery when it was in Kilkenny Castle, but what does it mean you can do now in relation to putting other work on show as well as a wonderful exhibition like Amelia has? Absolutely. Now, we have a space now that's almost six metres high, which is, uh, while the galleries in, in Kilkenny Castle were more domestic in scale, sort of similar more to the uh, the collection exhibitions that we have now in Evans Home, it just provides us with flexibility to offer shows to artists who make big work, but also media film installations. Uh, we, we wouldn't have had the opportunity to do things like um, uh, be, do the, the present the Irish premiere of Incoming, Richard Moss's uh, exhibition that followed his big uh, success at Venice a number of years ago. So he's going to feature next year. Our, our next show will be our third collaboration with Cartoon Saloon um, on Wolfwalkers. And then that's more of an installation. You can really create a whole installation feel in a larger space. But we've also got movable walls that can recreate some of the intimacy we currently we had at Butler Gallery in Kenny Castle. So it really provides us with flexibility. And then all of our auxiliaries, all the other spaces that we had to do everything in the gallery. We had to run our learning and public engagement program in the gallery. We now have a dedicated uh, learning center sponsored for the first year by St. Canis's Credit Union here in Kilkenny to be able to have workshops and, and lectures and talks. So mm -hmm. it really expands our programming and our possibilities Absolutely. for bringing people in. Absolutely. Uh, now now, back to you, Amelia. As I said, the title of this exhibition, which is about the Defence Forces, is called The Bloods. Well, where does the title come from? The title comes from the 3rd Infantry Battalion. It's, it's the, it was their na the given name that they had. And, it, you know... Y yes, it's the... It's a title that they use on their... Their, uh, their, 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 the front of their yep. building. Uh, oh, right. Okay. And um, uh, then just some of the people, uh, I don't know if you chose them or were they chosen for you. There is like Private Oshin uh, Roach. He's wearing night vision goggles, looking ready for action. Mm. He's a very a slightly frightening looking character. Tell us about him. Well, he was one of a pair of a recce crew, and um, they were two very extremely nice guys, actually, <laughs> and very easy to work with. Uh, and uh, Sergeant John Collins, who was the other part of that pair, was somebody who um, was introduced to me by um, by um, uh, uh, Rosanna White and... And we talked through the concept. So they were in 2019, but but they with with people like that, you really just have to be very careful that every small detail um, of their uniform, of their gun, that they're holding everything correctly. And again, as I described earlier, they would just appear in the handball alley individually, take their place, and make the photographs. Right. So they would they would strike their own pose. That wasn't uh, prompted by you. Well, I would turn somebody or angle somebody, but there was in a kind of an intuitive um, uh, feeling between myself and the 
subject. I mean, when somebody stands to look at you, they actually know how to carry themselves. Hmm. Yes, yes, and every all of the soldiers have something in their hands. They, well, some of them have guns. Uh, one is uh, the the lead of the dog mascot. Uh, another hmm. is um, a sword, and uh, and hmm. then there's a, a female soldier holding a Harley. Tell us about one or two of those, Amelia. Well, um, Kira Nevin, she was the particular soldier with the Hurley and she arrived in the handball alley actually with somebody else's Hurley with writing on it and I just had to took a few photographs and I realised wait a minute here we need to change this Hurley and she went back got her own plane her plane Hurley came back stood in and you must realise that these photographs were taken maybe three or four frames and then the person left so it wasn't a, a prolonged photo session with each person Yes, and you use film. Was that important for you to use a camera with, it's with film? It's always important. For me, I, I work on film, film and I try to make every shot count or every frame count. So I don't think on film. I were, were In this particular project, I used a Hasselblad on a tripod. So you're talking talking directly at each person who comes in and you make light meter readings and you talk with them and then make your, make your decision about the, the, the posture that they're in and three or four frames taken and that's, the, that's that particular session. So it wasn't long periods of time moving people around. It was just a very easy communication with, with, with people who really understood why they were doing this project. Um, Anna, well, what, what pieces uh, stand out for you in The Bloods? There's so many of them, but what, what, when Amelia was talking there, it made me realize that she's, uh, you know, what she has done with this group of uh, photographs is that she's really telling a narrative, a story about the roles the men and women take. And it's so rich in its history. So you really get a sense individually. It's kind of hard to explain that, oh, it's a simple black and white portrait. But by the time you get through the whole exhibition, you get a sense of, of the personalities and the, and the jobs and the hard work that's involved involved in being in the Defence Forces of Ireland. Uh, of course, I'm fond of, of Fionn the mascot and we hope to have him there with his handler uh, tomorrow and also we're planning to do some live drawing lessons in the classes with him in the gallery, uh, physically distant live drawing uh, classes so that uh, people can draw. The, uh, Fionn is a beloved mascot for, so, for so the So Fionn, the, the, the dog mascot. <laughs> the dog, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, and... Um, and and the, this this kind of exhibition, obviously, this is is this now flying a flag of the type of exhibitions that will be on in the Butler, uh, you know, accessible it's, exhibitions yeah, while yeah. while of a high artistic quality. Well, you know, really, for the first year, I have been thinking about Kilkenny, uh, either either Kilkenny artists or Kilkenny, you know, material that was uh, reflective of the building or our our county, uh, just in celebration of the opening year. Um, you know, Richard Moss couldn't; he was supposed to be uh, here showing in August, but because of the delays, we've had to postpone that till next year. But we're we're going to have a, um, a heavily painting. Uh, we're going to have a painting, several painting shows next year, and and. Uh, with uh, Cartoon Saloon, that's always um, so well received Indeed. and a, a great, a great response from people locally. But as usual, you know the the programming um, is fairly eclectic. It does, it does. Um, we will continue to highlight um, um, solo shows by emerging artists. That has been how we've how we've um, positioned ourselves in the past, and will continue. It just gives gives artists more of a scope regarding the space, and then we will see how things will evolve over time. We need to live in this building for a while. The, the building itself is is breathing and and settling down. And I think thematically and idea-wise, we will also, uh, you, you know, have that opportunity to dream. And But there, the programming is pretty much in set for the next year. And I hope people will come and visit. And, when and, we look, uh, yeah, well, we look yeah. forward to, to seeing Thanks, all Jay. of the various exhibitions. And good luck with the gallery opening tomorrow and the launch Thank of the exhibition. Much. That's Thank Anne you. O'Sullivan, director of the all-new Butler Gallery in Kilkenny, which has now moved from its previous home at Kilkenny Castle down to Evan's home on John's Quay in Kilkenny City. Very best wishes as well to photographer Amelia Steen, whose exhibition The Bloods will open the new Butler Gallery tomorrow.